So in this video, I'm just going to go into a quick description of how to set up a physics problem. We've kind of use this philosophy throughout the course of the entire year. So make sure you kind of follow these steps as you go through everything. Um, they may seem kind of excessive sometimes, but they're there for a reason to make sure you're following your correct procedures, and especially when problems get more complicated. It's really helpful to follow the steps that you need to make sure you're kind of going in the right direction and understand what you're doing. So first thing that you're going to be doing is writing down the problem information. So you're going to define all the variables with values and define the unknown. So here we have a car traveling 100 kilometers an hour. So that's going to be our velocity is 100.0 kilometers per hour. And we're going to travel a distance of 60.0 kilometers. And the thing that we want to know is time. So there's our unknown variable. So those are the three things that we're working off of for this problem. Okay. Now, with that, now we want to have a label diagram. Uh, for constant motion problems like this in one direction, the label diagram is not as important, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, the picture is going to help you understand what information you have to work with. So you should indicate values, directions, and motion, any forces acting on the object. So make sure that's clear. So if we have a diagram for this, here's my car. Okay, and I have an arrow Tell me that it's going... 100.0 kilometers per hour and then I'll have a distance here to whatever distance I'm trying to get to and that is 60 kilometers. Don't need to be fancy drawings if you're a great artist that's awesome but just simple diagrams I do lots of stick figures and boxes so don't worry about trying to make things look great um, just making sure you understand what the information is that you're working off of. So now we've got our diagram. So now we're going to write down our formula. It's called the working equation. So the working equation is the equation that is solved for the variable that's unknown. Uh, there will be some times throughout the course here I won't make you do that, but most of the time I want you to isolate for that unknown variable. So you might know that the distance equation is velocity times time, okay? but that's not solved for my unknown variable, which is t. So we want to isolate our equation down to that unknown variable. So t equals d over v if we do our algebra right. This is what's called the working equation. Okay, That's going to be key for all of our problems. So those are things that you may want to write down on your note cards. Whatever working equation you come up with while you're doing your homework, then you never have to do the algebra again. Or if you see something in class that we isolate and you're like, oh man, that algebra is a little bit tricky for me, you can write it down on your note card and use that throughout the course of the rest of the year. So there's our formula and working equation. And our next part is substitution. So now we're actually going to put the values in that we've um, that we've defined. So we know that d is 60.0 kilometers, and we know that v is 100.0 kilometers per hour. Okay. Um, so we've now put in the values that we're going to use. And then we can go ahead and solve the problem using those values. So we have 60 divided by 60 divided by 100 is 0 0.6. And since it's kilometers divided by kilometers per hour, we'll have 0 0.6 hours would be our answer based on dividing those two things out. Great. So looks like we're done, right? So now our final solution. The first thing we want to do is check significant figures of the final answer. 0 0.6 only has one significant figure. 60.0 has three significant figures. 100.0 has four. Remember, we're always going to use the least number of sig figs. Okay, so our answer needs to have three. So instead of 0 0.6, this should be 0 0.600 hours um, to make sure we're not losing any significance for our answer. So they're checked there. Then we want to check the units for the final answer and check there. We've got our hours and we're going to box that final answer. There's our last step. So that way it can be quickly found uh, when I go through and grade it or when you go back through and look at, look at your solutions later to make sure you're doing things right. So those are the basic steps that we're going to follow for every problem. So let's do another example really quick. Uh, so here we have sonar waves traveling at 1400 meters per second. So there's our velocity. And we want to know how deep a submarine is. So we're talking about a distance that we're going to cover. That's our unknown. And what happens when that sonar wave travels, it returns a ping to the surface ship 
and 0 0.400 seconds, or 0 0.40, sorry, too many zeros there. Okay, so those are our three unknowns. Now we're gonna draw a quick diagram because this will actually be kind of helpful. So we're gonna have our little boat on top of the water, and then our little submarine is down here with its little propeller. And with sonar, what happens is it sends a signal down, just like it did with the motion detectors, those of you that are in class, and then it's gonna bounce back. So the time it took to go down and back was 0 0.40 seconds. But we don't care about the distance down and back. We only care about half that distance. We only care about the distance there. So our time is not 0 0.40 seconds. Our time is gonna be 0 0.20 seconds because we only really care about the time it takes to get to the submarine. Okay. So there's our diagram, there's our variables. Now we have our working equations, can be d equals v times t. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and substitute that in, is 1400 meters per second times 0 0.20 seconds. And if we do 1400 times 0 0.2, we're gonna get a total distance of 280 meters. Uh, if I do a quick double check on my significant figures, 0 0.20 has two, 1400 has two, 280 has two. I do have a unit, I have meters, so I'm good to go. Boom, 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 box my answer, and there I'm all set. So you're gonna practice this with a couple of constant motion problems, and we're gonna add acceleration into it, um, kind of go through what those acceleration equations are before we, before we dive into that.